Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Morenci. We're breaking down UFC this Saturday night. What's happening, Gabe? Always a pleasure, Greg. Ready to uh, rock and roll. Great to have the UFC back after a week off. Absolutely, we're ready to get into it with our main event. Tyron Woodley taking on Gilbert Burns here. It's Woodley, who is a bit of a favorite. Which way are you headed in this bout? You know, this is a really, really interesting uh, fight. Gilbert Burns on a five-fight uh, win streak, and... Uh, he's a fighter that everybody uh, is really hyping up uh, right now. Woodley's an interesting case, uh, Greg. We're talking about a former champion. Woodley should be a baseball player because nobody likes him, and uh, he always has issues with his contract, <laughs> all right? But like Major League Baseball players right now, Woodley has a case. He's never been on Dana White's good side. Uh, you know, there's a saying, you know, I'll fight anyone, anywhere, at any time. Yeah, Woodley's not that guy, Greg. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Woodley's like, yeah, you know what? That contract doesn't make sense. Why would I go there and fight him in that country? You know what? That This fight doesn't make sense for me. He is like he's a former champion, and he's also a pound-for-pound -pound champion of having reasons why he shouldn't fight somebody. But I'll tell you what. He's one tough SOB. And I think the perception of him and the reality of him are two different things. He's aging right now. He's 38 years old. Yet, he hasn't really been in a lot of bloodbaths and wars. You know, when he lost uh, when he lost the championship, it was very, like, anti-lethargic. He really didn't have anything. I think he was mentally uh, fatigued. You know, even though he's 38, I think he's got a little bit of energy coming in here right now. And I don't like to fall for pre-fight hype too much, but I actually believe him. Um, you know, Woodley does a lot of TMZ, your favorite website, Greg, right? <laughs> TMZ Sports. <laughs> Um, but Woodley's like a regular, actually, on TMZ Sports. So he does a lot of, you know, interviews, basically weekly almost. And he's talking about how he's going to murder this guy. He's like, I'm dead serious. I'm not playing around. You know, people talk a lot of crap about me. You're going to see who, who Woodley is uh, this weekend. He goes, I feel sorry for Burns. Now, listen, Burns is a badass, man. All right? He's a badass. And God, I don't understand the number of this. Because all the hipsters on the street, Greg, are picking Burns to win this fight. But the number keeps going up. I don't know if it's the public uh, taking Woodley, but I liked Woodley better when he was in the 160 range. And he's been climbing. He's 184 right now, um, as we see at FanDuel. Um, but I think Woodley is going to win this fight. Burns is good. Woodley's better. Woodley does everything great, Greg. He's a great wrestler. He's a great striker. He's got great fight IQ. He doesn't just fight for the entertainment aspect. He fights to win fights via points. He can mix it up. I expect an angry Woodley to be able to get it done. And I think this fight's going to go the distance, man. Uh, four of Woodley's last five fights have gone the distance. And we're talking about 25-minute fights, Greg. I mean, this guy was a champion or fighting for championships all the time. He's used to these uh, long fights. I know Burns on a five-fight win streak, uh, but I'm going to take Woodley. And I like this fight to go the distance at plus money, plus 136 to go the distance. So give me the former champ and give me the fight to go the distance. Woodley talks a lot of smack. He's a former champion, and he's going to back it up. At least that's what he's telling all of us. Wherever you'll listen, Burns is hot. But Woodley, the, the fighter you want to go with, and Gabe believes this fight is going all the way. Up next, Augusto Sakai is taking on Blagoy Ivanov. And this, this is another really close fight. Two good fighters here. How do you see this one breaking down? Oh, this is a tough one. I feel like I'm on. Uh, I feel like I'm on the jury here, Greg. On like a very, very difficult case. You know what I mean? It's like, wow, you can make cases for both these guys. Uh, this is far from a star laden card here. It's essentially a UFC uh, Dana White contender uh, card put together in Las Vegas. And we should note this. Actually, I wanted to get to this. We should note they're fighting in a 25 foot cage as opposed to a 30 foot cage. Um, usually, who's this going to help? I don't know. I mean, basically. It helps both fighters, really, right? You know who it helps? It helps the fans because the fans watching this, it's very hard to uh, to avoid your opponent. You know, you talk about fighting in a phone booth, uh, so to speak, at 25 feet. But it, it, you can argue it as an advantage for both styles, uh, you know, different styles of fighters. In a sense, if you're a wrestler, you know, there's less room for your opponent to sort of maneuver and keep his distance from you when you shoot in uh, for a takedown. If you're a striker... There's less room for a guy to sort of use his angles and move around. You can really walk him down and get him in a phone booth. So, you know, a 25-foot cage could lead to entertainment, and I'm rolling the dice. I'm going against the theory, so to speak, because I think a lot of these fights are going to go the distance. But you talk about Sakai and Ivanov, so even, you know, so even. Ivanov, as you would expect, you know, tough dude, 
Um, you know, he, he can wrestle a little bit. He's got some heavy hands. Not, you know, these, these aren't like heavyweight champions we're talking about here, okay? I think Mike Tyson might be able to beat either one of these guys right now. Uh, but with that being stated, they are very evenly matched. I just like Sakai here. Uh, he's talking about a guy who's four years younger. He's going to be four inches taller. He's got a reach advantage. Um, you know, Ivanov has faced tougher competition, okay? Two and two in his last four. But he's faced tougher competition. He got thrown in there, and he was fighting really tough guys, big-name fighters, you know, Dos Santos, Derek Lewis, etc. So there's no shame in his record. But nevertheless, I just prefer a guy that's winning, a guy that's younger and winning. He's only lost once in his career in Sakai. You know, three-fight win streak right now in the UFC, Matt. K.O. Tabora uh, beat Andre Arlovsky, who we saw, you know, with a nice win recently. I didn't think he would do it. And Chase Sherman as well. This fight is basically a pick em. I'm going to go uh, with the slight favorite here. We'll lay the minus 114 uh, with the Brazilian and minus 114 here. I think this fight goes the distance too, Greg. It's minus 156. Uh, we should note Ivanov, he's never been KO'd <laughs> in, uh, in 21 fights. And his last five fights have gone the distance. That's saying something for a heavyweight, uh, Greg, that five fights in a row have gone the distance. This shouldn't, this won't be an exciting fight, uh, but I think Sakai wins, and I think it does go the distance. As you said, incredibly tough to pick this one. Sakai, he is hot, does have that one loss, but Ivanov, he doesn't get knocked out. That's why you have to like this one going the distance, and hopefully Sakai picks up the victory. He stays hot, and you get him in there, and you place your bet over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. All right, up next, Tim Elliott taking on Brandon Royville. Royville is the underdog. You always want to go with one of these underdogs here, Gabe. How come Royville's your guy? Well, you know, we got you know the dog walkers right now. A lot of people are out of work right now, including the dog walking industry, because everyone's at home, uh, Greg. So I'm going to step up. I'm giving them some work. I'm going to walk some dogs uh, here. Got to give you an underdog or two. We're going to go with uh, Royville here, in which, we're gonna, you know, listen, 27-year-old fighter. This is a hipster pick, guys. This is a hipster pick. And I'm going to tell you something that some people watching that wouldn't uh, know about me, baby. Number one, I used to have hair, all right? And a lot of it. I was in a heavy metal pick. But number two is uh, I hosted an MMA show for about eight, nine, ten years or so. MMA meltdown, all right? And we had all the fighters on. And one of my regulars on the show was actually one of these fighters here in Tim Elliott, okay? To prove that I'm ruthless, Greg. Yeah, he might have been a friend of the program, and that's why I tell you I know him. He's going to lose. <laughs> and I say that out of all due respect, but as I said, he used to have this guy on when I still had hair, essentially. He's been around a long time, two and four in his last six fights. Um, you know, you come, coming in here, Roy Ball is, is a guy. He's a hungry fighter, guys. And you talk about the, the unique situation right now of, of no fans and desperation and pandemic and everything that's going on. Uh, in the world. I've noticed over the last couple of weeks of these UFC cards, Greg, that the up and comers, the guys that have, you know, that are used to fighting in adverse situations, they're used to fighting in front of no feds. You know, somebody, remember I told you about the guy that chasing uh, rabbits in Arkansas? Remember Bryce Mitchell? He won easily, Greg. I said, this guy's fine. He's training in the woods. He's a nut job. All right. He's going to be fine. Roy Ball just strikes me as the perfect combination coming in here right now. Six years younger. Really hungry fighter, a fighter that a lot of uh, hipsters have been trying to get into the UFC for a couple of years now. This kid's going to be ready for his debut, Greg. And a plus 140, I got to like it. I mean, how the hell am I going to lay uh, minus 165, 64 or so? And I like Tim Elliott. Nice guy, great guy. Uh, but, you know, he's past his prime right now. Uh, he's one and three in his last four fights. He's two and four in his last six. Hard to lay a price with him. Give me the underdog here. All right, even though Tim Elliott is a friend of the program, doesn't matter how nice a guy is when you're trying to make money. That's not how you're going to make money on Saturday night. Go with the other dog. Go with Brandon Royville. Moving on, let's talk about Spike Carlisle. You're getting him at plus money as well. Plus 120 is Carlisle on Saturday night. What do you like about Carlisle here? Uh, because I just wanted the opportunity to say the word Spike Carlisle. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you get a cooler name fight with these guys? Spike Carlisle and uh, Billy Quarantillo. It sounds like it's a little Wild West. You know, Sheriff Spike, first Sheriff Carlisle, he's after that Quarantillo. And, oh, there's, 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 a sh there's a showdown. I'll tell you what, man, the Alpha Ginger, this guy's a piece of work. Uh, he's ripped. You know, we we're talking about a flyweight, you know, 145-pounder. Uh, his nickname, the Alpha Ginger. 
The guy is ripped. He probably is going to come in at about 160 uh, or so. Suffocates you, smothers you. A lot of quick stoppages, all right, for Carlisle. But we're getting another opportunity here. Listen, uh, the Alpha Ginger's on a five-fight win streak right now. We're getting him at plus 120. This is one of those fights where uh, the deeper it goes, Carlisle could be in trouble. He's been very successful of getting the people early. He's got a good ground game. Uh, but at some point in time, I think that uh, that Billy is going to find himself on his back. And I think uh, Billy the Kid is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Carlisle is a great finisher at plus 120. I'm surprised about the number here. Because I'll tell you what, Roy Val, and this is for the hipsters out there. If you're a casual MMA fan, I'm not just telling you this. It's true. Like, if you go to the hardcore MMA websites, hardcore MMA fans, they all love this Roy Val kid. All right? I'm not talking about betting purposes, but... He's sort of one of these guys that, you know, the hardcores have been hyping up uh, for a little while. And similar situation. A lot of people are buzzing about Carlisle. I'm surprised about the number, but if it's a trap, I'm walking right into it. It's like bait car. Arrest me, Greg. Give me Spike Carlisle. The only thing better than saying Spike Carlisle is the Alpha Ginger Spike Carlisle. That's a name we can bank with. That's a name that's going to win. You get him at plus 120, plus money. Hopefully the fight does not go long. But he still comes up a winner anyway. Gabe Marinci, we appreciate the time. Good luck on Saturday night. Hey, always a pleasure, guys. May the winners be yours. Absolutely. Enjoy the fights, everybody. Get those bets in over at the FanDuel Sportsbook. And for Gabe Marinci, I'm Greg Sussman. Stay safe, everybody.